Christmas. So, you know, it's the happy holidays, Santa Claus, mm -hmm. Christmas lights, presents, you know, blah, 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 all that. What are your thoughts on Christmas? Uh, that's a good one. That's really juicy. Okay. Um, Christmas is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of holidays um, from ancient holidays, and they all have to do with astronomy and astrology. We think that Christmas is the birth of the Christ. The way that Christ Mass came to be was through the Catholic Church when they were organizing uh, this holiday, trying to incorporate the pagan holidays with this new Christian thing, right? So they called it the Christ Mass. But, but in uh, Rome at that time, they were practicing something called Saturnalia. And that was like basically an orgy. <laughs> I was just talking about that. <laughs> Which is, you know, can be a lot of fun if you're into that kind of thing. So um, the one thing that I have to tell you, just do a little research, but this is fun. As you're like with your Christmas tree and with your presents and with your tinsel and your garland and your wreath, think sex because the Christmas tree represents a penis, a big fat one. Um, garland, the red garland represents menstrual blood. The wreath represents a vagina. <laughs> the Christmas ornaments themselves represent balls or testes. And tinsel represents semen. So we have, <laughs> and we throw that semen, I mean that tinsel, don't we? <laughs> Everywhere. So a lot of times people are practicing something and they don't really realize the origins of it, right? So we think that it's, yeah, the symbolism of all of it, right? And like what it, what it comes to. And I've heard a lot of people say, remember the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. Really remember the reason for the season, because it's not what we think it is. And the, um, the actual birth, the reason that they put the birth of Christ on that day was because there were so many other gods who were worshipped on that day, the birth of those gods. Um, but one of the most important astrological, astronomical things happens during the month of uh, December, this, the winter solstice. And so actually the, the sun is closer to the, as close as it will ever be to the earth during that time. Mm. On, in the northern hemisphere, it's our longest night, right? But the sun is actually closest to its earth closest as it will ever be in our orbit around the sun during that time. So actually, the, the sun represents the solar Christ, or enlightenment, the radiating sun. So when on the winter solstice, when the sun is that close to the earth, the earth is being infused with the sun's power. So it's a very powerful time to anchor new, new uh, birth for yourself, um, to give thanks for all that's happened the year before, and a, a time of the virgin birth, like the new b idea that's coming forward for you. So that's what it's celebrating also. I'm so glad that you touched on all these things because I was just talking about almost all of those top, all of those things that you just mentioned, I mentioned earlier, and it was just like, I watched a couple of videos. I, I saw them last year and I knew about this. That's why I saw them a couple of videos before I did the show to refresh my memory. And those were exactly the videos that I watched that what you're talking about, except for the sex with the Christmas tree and all that. I haven't seen that one yet, but I'm sure it's gonna yeah, that's be- pretty obscure information, yeah, right? Because yeah. the one that I saw was the tree represents the tree where Adam and Eve, okay. and then, uh, the garland represents the snake curling up the tree, and then the star represents, you know, uh, oh, that's nice. yeah, that's um, the star of, you know, whatever. But anyways, that was one of the uh, videos, but it's also very similar to what you're talking about. But, you know, that just gives you an idea of, you know, the origins of Christmas. Really do your research, go out there, and uh, before you go out and, and celebrate, Jesus is Christ's birthday. Right. Uh, now, what about, uh, well, Jesus Christ, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this icon? Right. Um, I believe that there probably was someone born with the name Yehoshua ben Joseph, or whatever his father's real name was. Um, and he may, may have been a really great teacher. It seems that there are a lot of things given to him. The, the brilliance of 
some of those parables, it's just amazing. And there definitely was something that was being disseminated in those para parables, like, as you think, as a man thinketh, so he liveth. Um, if you pray believing, then you shall receive. The, we think that that means to pray and, like, beg God for something, and then maybe if we're good, you know, we'll get it. That's Santa Claus. That's not God. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the things that are ascribed to Jesus, the icon, um, I think that maybe there was some teaching going on. I don't believe that we need any, there's no reason for us to be saved from anything. Saved from what? If God's creation is perfect as it is, what does it need to be saved from? That's the problem with, with religion, is believing that there's something wrong with us. If we have the belief and the thought that something is wrong with us, we will always be separated from the power that we are to create. And that doesn't mean that we go around being boastful, I'm a mighty creator. And if you are, you have to know that that power is, you're one with that power. That power is the same power that's in you, it's in him, it's in her. You know, this power is, is living through us. So Jesus talked about that. I believe there was someone who talked about that. But um, I think that all the, the resurrection story and all the rest of it, that was said about Horus. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very ancient story. Okay. So. And if Jesus Christ was the son of God, mm -hmm. aren't we all the sons and daughters of God? Right. Like that, there's a verse that says, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That verse is the cornerstone of the Christian faith, the, the faith that broke away from the Catholic Church. Um, because the Christians believed, unlike the Catholics, that you don't need to have a intermediary. You don't need a priest. You have direct ask, access to Jesus. And what we're doing now, you know, in the age of Aquarius, we're even becoming more clear that we don't even need the Savior. Jesus didn't come here to this man who walked the planet and taught people and perhaps you know, obviously was some influence, influence of something in his teaching. Um, he never wanted to be worshipped, or he didn't ask for that. So this verse is giving us a direct understanding that we are the, the creation of God, and within us we have the power to realize our everlasting nature, our eternal life. So that's, I believe that that's what it is. It's just that the, I think that the words, the scriptures themselves have been manipulated in a way to keep that control, keep people believing that they need to have a church or need to have someone lead them. Um, instead of understanding that we're social beings by nature, we like to come together and to talk and to share and to care for one another, we could perhaps evolve into something that's way more loving than one person being in charge of everyone else and telling us that money is wrong and then passing the collection plate to collect our money. So. The root of all evil. <laughs> the love of But, you know. Uh -huh. But, um, no, I, I, what I've come to believe is that Jesus Christ was a man, a son of God, like all of us. Mm -hmm. He came to this earth, but he had, he was more in touch. He just happened to be one of those humans that come into this world that's more in touch with their spirituality that's just so maybe he just mastered it so purely that you know he became like you know who jesus christ right there's a great book called the aquarian gospel of jesus christ and this book talks about uh, jesus the christ because we're all the christ we all have that ability to actualize to the Christ. Um, but it stated that Jesus went through all these initiations. He was they, they believe he was a part of the Essenes, and the Essenes went through seven different initiations to become these enlightened people or initiated into the mysteries. And even the parables, when you read them in the Old Testament, they're, they're I mean, in the New Testament, they're not easy to understand. And back in that time, we, they didn't have anything. They didn't even have written books to read. So everything was told in an oral tradition, you know, it was a story. So um, Jesus had access by being affiliated with the Essenes to information that was not for the common people. So I believe that that's how he came in to understand the mystery of creation, that how you think if, if I can look at you and see absolutely nothing wrong with you, if I see you as totally perfect, there's something in you that recognizes that from me. But I have to be such a clear being in myself. I can't have any judgment of myself or of life or anything. You know, you have to really understand that we, 
You have to practice understanding that we're more than what we appear to be with these bodies, mm -hmm. and that all that we are as these bodies is absolutely 100%, 100% perfection. Mm -hmm. So I believe that Jesus practiced that, he understood that, or Yeshua practiced that with the Essenes, and that that is how he was able to teach from such a powerful place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because okay. he disappeared. Right. From 12 to, <clears throat> to uh, 33, mm -hmm. right?